Hey there, Philip here. Google I.O., the last many years I was involved, as in like I was there as a Google employee, I was preparing talks, I was talking at Google I.O., uh, I was just like very inside, uh, inside that thing. And now for the first time in a decade, <laughs> terrible. In a decade, I I'm actually an outsider, and it's it's really cool that just kind of sitting there and watching Google I/O, and I thought it would it might be interesting to watch it um, with the camera on and to um, give some reactions and maybe some a little bit of color that you would normally not get. You know, when you're at Google and you're working on an event like this, there's just some things that you don't mention, on, don't talk about, and I, I'm not talking about the secret stuff, but I'm just talking about stuff that would feel weird to mention as you are a Googler. I will get to that, but um, so, so hopefully this will be more than just random dudes rambling about things that happened at I.O. this year. Um, and I should say, this is clearly very much focused on the developer keynote and very much focused on Flutter, because I'm I'm working with Flutter, I'm from the Flutter team, so, you know. <laughs> All right, I'll just stop talking and let's go. I love the music. It's always good. I like the fact this will be an introduction. Um, <laughs> I, I love all that, but but you know it's, it's going to be hello, welcome. This is great. A little bit of joke and uh, and all that uh, excitement. Um, I love the fact that this takes place in Shoreline Amphitheater again um, because I remember Google I/O back when it was in Moscone Center when where. Uh, you have all these corporate events, and that's just just a corp like a um, corporate um, conference center, right? Shoreline Amphitheater is a like history induced place where there are rock concerts when there's no not Google I/O, and it's outside and it's really nice and and, and very just very nice. So so I'm glad that they were able to come back to that anyway. And some of you might recall, that's when HTML was a draft, not a standard. I was teaching myself to build a static website and thinking back, I'm sure glad that's how I, I, I had to get it to work on a VGA monitor. That's how I started too. Technology allows you to be much more inventive. But with it, it brings... Actually, no, that's not completely true. I'll, I'll skip this. Uh, I, I think she's talking about how she started uh, developing and how it's a long time ago. Uh, I think we share that because, yeah, I started in the 90s too. Uh, ever. It's a set of requirements that would have been impossible to deliver in any other computing era. To help you, Google is bringing simplicity to the challenges that developers face. And we're doing this in two ways. Okay, so let's just look at this, right? Um, highly interactive and fast experiences. I love that because of course it's it plays well into Flutter and uh, into kind of all this design thinking, not design thinking, but, but let's make apps and developers design aware, right? Uh, that, that I've been talking about for, for some time now. Uh, so that's that's great. Systems that dynamically scale, I don't know what that means, but product user privacy and safety, it's it's such an obvious thing that, that Google needs to deal with. And it's not that Google is not protect, has not been protecting user privacy, but it's about the perception, right? Uh, and Apple kind of always hammers on that, like oh, we're we're the ones that uh, like privacy, and Google is the one who uh, you know takes all your privacy away. And so um, I I'm pretty sure that's that was a big big point uh, to 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 hammer. Um, all right, ah, okay, Flutter. So let's see. The latest 
on augmented reality, Android, Chrome, Flutter, Firebase, Google Cloud, and machine learning. We hope you'll... All right, so one other thing that I should say is a few years back, this would be impossible <laughs> to have Flutter mentioned at like in two minutes into the main developer keynote. Um, it was, first of all, Flutter was of, of course just a budding new technology, uh, but also it was kind of at the point where Google still didn't exactly understand how Flutter fits in. You know how Google operates where sometimes things are made. Um, so some pe people at Google, engineers at Google, come up with a new cool thing, and then it's uh, someone <laughs> needs to figure out how that all fits into what Google is already doing. And in many ways, it doesn't work out. In some ways, it does work out. And when it does work out, it, it's spectacular, right? Um, many of the things like you know Google Maps, um, Docs through Wave, all of these came out from from weird things that didn't really fit into Google. And uh, so anyway, at that time, two, three, four years back, it was weird because you have Android, which is a platform, and then you have this new kid on the block, Flutter, that is basically saying, hey, you don't need to build for platforms. You need you can build for a, for a multi or platform environment. And uh, so, yeah, it was hard to, to even get a mention anywhere. We had talks, of course, um, but not that many um, compared to how Flutter was already popular. And... And uh, I, I think two years ago was the first time that there was a mention by someone uh, about Flutter in the in the keynote, in the developer keynote, of course. And uh, last year, I think, or maybe it was was it last year? Anyway, it was uh, it was late, coming late. And now I can see that they're actually covering Flutter in the keynote. And it's it's talked about two minutes in. That, that's a huge leap forward for for Flutter. In, in the eyes of, of Google itself and therefore in in, in the perceived um, support for Flutter from Google. And the, all the kudos, all the credit goes to the community because, uh, you know, politically there is no real reason for Google to, uh, to talk about Flutter. But if it's, if a lot of people are really excited about Flutter, then that's a really good reason to uh, to to cover it, right? All right. Google Cloud. Eh. All right. I am going to be uh, in the interest of time. I'm going to skip through everything. <laughs> I am going to skip through all this. This looks like uh, is it Android? Uh, blah. Yeah. Foldables. Laughter, Android, um, marketing video, cool, 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 testing, nice. Oh, a live demo, cool. Very good. Android Studio. Compose. This looks like the web. All right. I'll probably review this later, but I don't want to bore you with. Um, I, as I said, one of my earliest things in development was developing websites, and I'm still. Ah, Tim. All right. It's on Flutter. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. <laughs> so let's talk about Flutter, which is our framework for building beautiful multi-platform experiences from a single code base. I like the shirt. We, we built Flutter to revolutionize UI development. We're combining the web's iterative development model with a hardware-accelerated graphics engine and pixel-level control that were previously only the preserve of games. 
And over the last four years... Interesting. So th this is one thing that I uh, that I used a lot and I still use when I when someone asks me like what, what's this Flutter thing? I'm basically saying it's, it's like if you know Unity for games, well Flutter is that for apps, right? And there's there's a twist there, but we'll get to that. Um, it's our first beta. We've been gradually building on those foundations. We've added new framework capabilities and new widgets. Deeper integration with the underlying platforms, a rich library of packages, and many performance and tooling improvements. And as the product has matured, more of you have started to build apps with it. And today, there are over 500,000 apps built with Flutter. This is something that it's almost as if he's talking to Google, <laughs> um, Tim. Because for a developer, I don't care how many other apps. Actually, like, the more apps there are that use this technology, that use this basically competitive advantage, the less likely, le the less excited I am about it. I guess maybe that's because I'm an early adapter um, and laggards might be the Apple seed. But this is Google I.O. developer keynote, so a lot of people there will be early adapters. I think it's like saying, oh, hey, uh, here's this exciting new thing, uh, but it's already, like, there's only half a million people building apps there. <laughs> so, uh, but it does, it does work a lot, I think, um, internally. Um, and maybe for, yeah, again, maybe for laggards or for business people, to say, hey, like there's so many people using it already. Um, so yeah, pay attention. And as we talk to you, many of you have told us that Flutter is helping you build beautiful apps more quickly for more platforms. So today we're introducing Flutter 3. So let me say this. I, I don't have any, any in, inside information, obviously, about Flutter 3. But uh, this is where Tim's, Tim is an excellent person in terms of finding ways to, um, uh, to make things exciting, basically. So w when he joined the team, I was already there. He joined as, as a new um, product manager. And I know that we had... A, it wasn't even an argument. It was um, he had a different opinion than me, and I was wrong. <laughs> it turned out to be that I was wrong uh, for some reason, <laughs> and um, the reason was so. Basically, when he joined, um, Flutter was still in beta, and he came in and said, "Look at all these other frameworks. They are less stable than Flutter." And they're already saying like, oh, we're version 2.0 and we're super stable and you should use, that, use us in like enterprise environments, or whatever. And, and we were still this modest, very humble thing where we were like, ah, oh, well, there's still things that don't work exactly right and we shouldn't, you know, over promise and stuff like this. And Tim said, come on, let's, let's just call it a 1.0. And we were like, well, uh, what does what makes it 1.0? And um, he was right, of course. Uh, you at some point you need to make this event, as in like, uh, not an event like Google I/O, but but you have to make um, something uh, memorable, uh, and it can't be just beta 0.5.3.3. You need to give people something to hold on to. And um, at the start, it was 1.0 and just calling it this Flutter is now 1.0. It didn't really mean anything. Nothing broke, basically, for 1.0. There was no breaking change. So semantic version, it wasn't semantic versioning. Um, it it wasn't that uh, Flutter was now like uh, somehow qualitatively completely different than when it was in beta. But it was basically um, 
a marketing tactic in the best uh, way possible <laughs> uh, to, to say, hey, come on, uh, pay attention. Flutter is now 1.0. It, we think that it's mature enough. Uh, Flutter 2.0 was a, a little different story because it was breaking because of non-safety. Uh, it was half breaking. Uh, but three, I'm pretty sure, actually I know already, it's not breaking at all. It's, it's just, they're just saying, look at us, you know? And so it is a double-edged sword, uh, but you could, you could say, hey, like uh, some engineers could say, well, first of all, is this going to break my code again? Ugh. Um, so hopefully not. And second of all, if you do this a lot, then it loses its punch, right? If if you if you were already at Flutter 14, then it's like okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a very important, very useful tool in open source development to just stick a flag in the ground and say we're now at Flutter 3.0. So yeah, that, that's that's what uh, I'm seeing here. And Flutter 3 is the culmination of our journey to fill out the platform supported by Flutter. With Flutter 3, you can build high quality, beautiful experiences for all six platforms from a single code base, giving you unparalleled productivity and enabling startups to bring new ideas to the full addressable market. From that's the dream, right? I, I love that they are calling it out. Uh, it's basically saying, uh, you know, up until now, um, it was always a dream to just build once and run everywhere, blah, 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 Java. And, uh, and now for a subset of apps, this actually makes sense and it actually is great and it, it works and it works on Android, iOS, web, Windows, Mac and Linux, and the apps look the same um, everywhere. You know, it's it's it, it, because Flutter ships with its own um, rendering engine. It can and layout engine and text engine everything. It can actually tell you basically or or guarantee that that uh, your app or game will work on all these platforms. So so th this is a huge huge deal. Um, I'm uh, very happy that that they're they're using this and that they're they're saying this. Day one. You know. Thank you. You know, adding new platforms requires more than just rendering pixels. It includes new inputs and interaction models. It includes compilation and build support, accessibility, internationalization, platform-specific integration. And we want to give you the flexibility also to take full advantage of that underlying operating system when this is one thing uh, that that he mentions that i want to also stress and that is that uh, flutter as it matures as any technology matures it makes it harder to grasp and to it's it's harder for the um you know developer out there to learn Flutter because suddenly when when I was starting in Flutter it it could only do iOS and Android and it could do that only a very in a very limited sense and there was no way to add Flutter to other apps and you know it, it was very limited but for what it could do it was very straightforward it was just like yeah create a Flutter project and start building you know and and it's it's all it will it was all very very straightforward uh, but then inevitably you want to add more features and and support more environments and more use cases and suddenly this thing that started as a very small thing becomes complex you could say that it kind of ruins <laughs> ruins everything basically <laughs> because and it, it's not just for developer products it's all products will have that problem right you at some point have to um, either choose okay we'll always 
will, will, will not grow any further and will always be this kind of small niche product for very niche audiences. Uh, or you go, and most of most do when they're successful, they'll go, oh, you have a use case that we don't, we aren't covering yet, we'll do that. Oh, we need to also support this, we'll do that. And, and then not only the product itself gets more complex, but also the usage of that product gets, gets more, uh, it gets harder. So sometimes I long for the times without no safety and without Windows and Mac support and web support, where just things were very, very simple to understand, very simple to convey, but it's life. Um, I, yeah, anyway, um, something to be aware of. Whenever you build a Flutter app, while sharing as much UI and logic as you choose. On Linux, Canonical has been contributing to offer a highly integrated option for development, and they're already using it themselves with a suite of Linux packages that provide APIs for core operating system services. On Mac OS, we've invested in supporting both Intel and Apple Silicon with support for universal binaries. So now you can build high quality compiled experiences for any Mac and submit your desktop apps to the Apple Store. So one example of how Flutter 3 enables beautiful desktop experiences is Superlist. And this is a new collaboration app that we've kind of fallen in love with. They started with Mac OS as their target platform, but since they're using Flutter, they also get Windows, Android, and iOS yeah, apps all the from dream. the same code. That's the dream. Uh, all right, so a use case, cool. Um, a list of things. New right performance here. tooling, we've got material free, uh, foldable device support, and some new language features in Dart that we think you'll enjoy. Today, we are also announcing the Flutter Casual Game Toolkit. And that's a starter kit of resources, including a sample game, learning materials. Ah, yes. OK. All right. So this, this is, for me, a big deal. All right. So I'm actually, um, I was part of this initiative to create a sample game in Flutter that basically uses Flutter itself, its app, widgets, and everything to build a game instead of, for example, trying uh, or using Flame Engine. Flame Engine is more for like, you know, like video games, games. Um, I explained that in a video that will be published soon, but, but uh, there are also games that are very app-like and, and therefore it makes a lot of sense to use Flutter in itself, right? And so anyway, I, I build a game um, and now it's mentioned in the developer keynote. It's not, you know, it's not shown or anything, but just the fact that it's mentioned uh, is, is great for me. Um, and it's kind of weird, right? I, <laughs> I worked at Google for so many years um, and of course, kind of the pinnacle of, of a person who works at Google as an engineer and in DevRel is to be to have something uh, have this much attention, like to to build something that is is shown at a keynote at a keynote um, at, at Google I/O, and uh, and it's and it never happened to me. I was always involved at Google I/O. Um, I was, as I said, I was talking. Um, I was always somehow involved in building stuff for Google I.O., but only after I, <laughs> I left Google, for personal reasons, uh, only after, uh, a year after I left Google do I get to <laughs> the developer keynote with uh, one of my um, projects. So that, that's cool and that just makes me happy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I'll talk about what that is and and why yeah you know I'll talk about that game later that this is let's talk about news from Flutter and not my stuff community spaces and information about credits for Google developer services all this so you can go from a great idea quickly into a published game
I work in the same way. So. Of course, there's more to building an app than a UI framework. And so Firebase helps you build, release, and operate your apps. And 62% of Flutter developers are already using Firebase in their apps. Today, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Today, we're announcing the graduation Weird of Flutter clapping. Firebase integration into a fully supported core part of the Firebase offering. So we're moving the source code and the documentation into the main Firebase repo and site. And you can count on us continue to evolve Firebase support for Flutter in lockstep with Android. And All right, this is something that, that should be probably covered. Flutter and Firebase, right? In, at Google, we have all these, or they have all these products, and they are largely independent sub-organizations. And they, of course, try to work with each other and collaborate. But sometimes it's not the, the most important thing on their mind, because, uh, as I said before, sometimes you come up with an, an idea and, and Google gives you this space to explore it. And you, you don't want to necessarily limit that idea to be like, well, but how does it work? Does it work well with Android? It's, you know, in, in the beginning, it might not. Uh, so, uh, but, but, but you should still be able to explore that, right? So for Flutter, uh, attaching itself a little bit with Firebase and vice versa, Firebase attaching itself to Flutter makes a lot of sense because they are both these uh, technologies that are mostly for smaller startups and individual at at, at least at start right uh, they are th this like make something that is normally hard easy and uh, yeah and um, now that Flutter is able to say by the way so Flutter so the, the fact that Flutter leadership can go to uh, Google leadership and say, by the way, uh, we are very, very po popular around the world. And uh, not only do we kind of uh, pass on that popularity from Flutter to Google in a way, right? We also uh, make it really easy for people to opt in use Firebase. Uh, which, by the way, makes money for Google, right? Flutter itself doesn't. Flutter itself does not make money. It's used at Google, so of course it, you know, um, the, the the apps that are built by Flutter make money for Google. But uh, for example, you know, Google Ads. But uh, Flutter itself doesn't. Firebase does make money, as far as I understand. <laughs> Uh, but because you actually have to pay for for your cloud storage and cloud compute and everything like that, and uh, that way Flutter can say, well, if you're a small developer, uh, you probably don't want to deal with three different targets, so use Flutter. And by the way, if you need some kind of crash reporting or some kind of server side, um, then uh, here's Firebase. It's very easy. You can, you can of course, use anything else. But Firebase is easy. It's, it's right there, right? So, so that, that's, that's important for, for any product at Google and any other organization to be able to, to do that and to say that. iOS. In particular, today, we're releasing Flutter support for Crashlytics. So now you can track fatal and informational errors with the same set of features. My uh, my game is already the the game sample is already using Crash Legs, but I wonder what this adds to that. Uh, seems like maybe there's uh, it's easier to use, but it's already pretty easy to use. So uh, that's cool. Anyway, actually, the Firebase team has been busy. So I'd like to welcome Francis Ma to the stage to tell you about some of the other work that they've been up to. Welcome, Francis. Okay, and that's that's it for Flutter. Okay, now let's have a look at the Flutter keynote. Or what's new in Flutter? Oh man, I like I I so much love the every every year Google I/O. 
uh, hires like some of the best motion animation people and they make something like this. And I know it's at this point, it's a kind of corp corporate design thing, but it's always so nice and so um, perfected um, that I always kind of want to steal all that. <laughs> the colors, the, the, the typography, uh, the dimensions, and of course the sound, uh, I just love it. Hi there, and welcome. It's great to have you here with us. My name's Tim Sneath, and I work on product and UX for Flutter and Dart. And with me is Andrew Brogdon, who leads developer relations for... Product and UX, interesting. He's a product manager, as far as I remember. Uh, and the fact that he says he's product and UX means that uh, UX probably is even more important for Flutter now than it was when I was there, which is absolutely great. UX, uh, one big reason that people don't talk about why Flutter is as good as it is, is because of the amazing UX people and UX research that uh, that Flutter has available. Uh, they're talking to developers, they're making research, they're making basically kind of like almost ethnography, like, you know, watching developers develop with Flutter and other technologies. It's it's a big, big deal and big reason why you're happy with Flutter. And hey, everybody. For those of you who are new to this space, Flutter is an open source toolkit supported by Google for building beautiful. OK, OK, um, we'll skip the intro. And this. I wonder why they say embedded. There's the all the releases, initial release, yeah. Yeah, productive development. Some services like camera or Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. What what images? This is a sample that demonstrates multi-platform UI for a music player. As you can see, on mobile, it's built around a bottom navigation bar. On the home screen, there's a tab controller for quickly flipping between panels and content. And there's a button to switch between light and dark themes. It's pretty cool, but this also screams mobile UI, right? So let me pull it up on desktop. You can All right, so, so they're talking about platform adaptability, uh, which is nice. Yeah, they're, they're showing a web and Android. I can hop into the code, add a much longer string, and save the file. And I immediately see that the text is properly truncated on all four platforms, which is great because otherwise I would have just broken my teammate's app in front of 100,000 people. And that's just plain rude. Instead, hopefully you've gotten a peek at what Flutter's developer experience can be like. By the way, if you'd like to play with this app and learn more about how the code was put together, check out the workshop from That's Boring to Beautiful and the tech session, Diving into Flutter Desktop, right here at I.O. Both of them feature this sample. So let's talk about Flutter on each class of device type, desktop, web, and mobile. And we'll start with desktop. In our last stable release, we added support for Flutter on Windows. And today, we're adding Mac OS and Linux. Supporting... Oh, I'm so glad that he didn't say uh, we're excited to add. I'll, that, that's, an, that's one pet peeve. Another pet peeve. I have many pet peeves. One of them is when people say something like, oh, we're excited to announce that blah, blah, blah. He just said, we're adding. Mac OS means you can now build beautiful custom experiences, like Superlist, which releases as a beta today. Hey, everyone. I'm Brandon, head of design and one of the founders of Superlist. Uh, bass guitar in the distance. Always good. 
Yeah, this this looks like a really nice. This looks like something that uh, is well. Superlist. We knew we wanted amazing design. Um, a good, very, very good fit for Flutter, right? You have something that's uh, a lot. There's a lot of motion. Maybe there are new design features that normally aren't really that, you know, that, that aren't supported by the platforms. Um, you, you're basically using the game engine element of Flutter. So so that's that's really nice. Yeah, all, all this, that's exactly that, right? Like you're using Flutter for, for what it's intended to do. A bunch of really custom stuff that you, it'd be very hard to do in just like the usual tools. All right, all right. This is the new processor architecture that powers Apple's latest hardware. Flutter has worked on Apple Silicon since day one, but Flutter 3 completes our support. When it comes to Apple Silicon, there are two developer journeys that really matter. How to use those machines as your development environment and how to compile binary. Right. The, I, I think the, this is great. I do have uh, Apple Silicon Mac, so so this is great to, to hear. Um, and the fact that you just Flutter upgrade. If you've already installed the SDK, just run Flutter upgrade as you normally would, and the system will make sure it grabs the right binaries for you and your platform. Once that new version of the SDK. That's fantastic. Uh, I don't need to. I think I hacked this before, and now we don't need to. And things will run faster. But hey, it's just for the people who have Flutter M1 Max and Max, not Max. Uh, and that's uh, Today we're announcing a minority Flutter of people. supports building expect from well made applications. As it happens, I was looking. Right. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, so that's one of the two. Yeah, another thing that I should mention is uh, is how hard it is to make a, um, this not look awkward, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure they are not talking to each other, right? Like this, these two, the the camera of Andrew and the camera of Tim were shot in different places, probably different times. And so they had to write a script and then act as if they were talking to each other. And uh, it's really hard for timing. It's it's really hard to just make jokes when they are scripted. Um, it's uh, so so kudos for them to, to to make it work. They they made it work. Um, and this work. And uh, they would be much better if they are actually in one place talking to each other. Through a joint collaboration with Canonical who are the organization behind one of the most popular distributions of Linux, Ubuntu. And thanks in love. It's pronounced Ubuntu? Man, I th another thing that I mispronounce. I, I say Ubuntu. Ubuntu, okay. Much part to Canonical's work, we have a suite of packages that add tailored UI and integration with system services. And that includes things like Dbus, G settings, network manager, Bluetooth, desktop notifications as well as a comprehensive theme and widget set for Yaru, which is the Ubuntu look and feel. On web, we've been busy with Polish in the run-up to Flutter 3. And I want to share two specific examples of that work that I think you'll like. Firstly, we've added a new API that provides you control over the loading of the Flutter framework, engine, and your content. Ah, that's super good. And essentially, this lets you run Flutter in headless mode on the web. So you might use this for example, to preload your Flutter app while you're showing a login screen or a progress bar. Secondly, we've done work to take... Run Flutter in headless mode? Oh, like you can use Dart to do something about the loading stuff? Interesting. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, and But uh, no matter how they did it, the fact that you can uh, play around better with the loading screen on the web is a huge deal. I have, um, actually, I have that Flutter game sample on the web, 
And the main pain point is that because I use shaders, I need to use Canvas Kit instead of the HTML uh, renderer. And um, that means that it's even it takes even longer to load. And if you don't have some kind of loading animation that's nice, people will just go away immediately. So for like, you know, because you're staring at basically a white screen for what? five seconds, 10 seconds sometimes, that's not gonna work. So um, yeah, Flutter on the web, good stuff can be done, um, especially if you're working on an app or game that people are fine with waiting for. You know, if you're doing Twitter, that's probably not going to work because people want that immediately. Uh, but, but if you're working on something like Rive, or something like a game, um, then they're fine with waiting, but they need to know that they are waiting and not just staring at a white screen. Advantage of the latest web standards for image decoding. And here's an example right now of how all this shakes out. What you're looking at right now is a stress test of GIF animation, where we have hundreds of GIF images all being loaded and decoded in real time. Oh, cool. That's good. And with the new Web Codex API, which is already supported on Chrome 99 or higher and coming soon to other browsers, we can take advantage of new APIs to greatly speed up the processing of images, which helps with things like jank-free scrolling. Speaking of things built with Flutter Web, the suite of debugging and profiling tools that ships with the Flutter SDK, Flutter DevTools, also got some new features in this release. If you haven't used DevTools before, we have a tools while debugging. Once you do, you can take advantage of some new performance tools. Head over to the Performance tab and look for a button that says Enhance Tracing. Give it a click, and you'll see three new trace. OK, so track widget builds, that's been there. But track layouts and track paints, I don't think, has options. been there. These allow that's you great. to add the Flutter build, layout, and paint events to the performance information captured by DevTools. You can see it here in this flame graph, letting me know how long each part of the widget lifecycle occupied Oh, okay. in part of a recent run of my app. Flutter DevTools also now offers the ability to turn off some rendering types, like clipping, opacity, and shapes, in order to help narrow down any performance issues that are preventing your app from hitting the right frame rate. Oh, that's cool. You can just turn off a feature and see if that makes a difference. That's so good. That's so good for performance. These are the latest features to make their way to DevTools, but since last year's I.O., a bunch of new things have landed including improvements to the network tab, a dedicated plugin for provider that can help keep track of change notify. That's my old cat. Uh, that's the provider demo. I don't remember that yellow thing. Um, was it that bad? <laughs> it doesn't, I can't read it. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see. There's another app state and more. Things. OK, so we talked about how Flutter 3 adds Mac OS and Linux support and the improvements we've made to web. To we've introduced foldable support. Thank OK. Flutter to work. This is a sample application and sort of a demo rolled into one, and you can find it on GitHub. The repo includes a Flutter module for capturing user sentiment, which is one of those cross-cutting business needs that can show up on every platform. Alongside the module are three native newsfeed apps, one that's a website, one built with Kotlin for Android, and one built with Swift UI. Each of those imports the module and displays it as the feed is scrolled. The idea is to provide a realistic example of how Flutter can save development cycles and to make it as easy as possible to try Flutter in your own applications and see how it feels with your code and your team. To that end, the Flutter module itself is available for download, again, right from the repo, as a pre-built framework for iOS, an Android library and AAR format, and as a zipped up web project, ready to be dropped into a folder of your web app and loaded via iframe. So if you're someone who's already got some published apps and you thought, hey, Flutter looks kind of cool, but I'd like to know how it would work in my app, now you can find out in about 10 minutes with the instructions in the readme. Let me show you an example. This is the same newsfeed sample for iOS that's in the repo, but I've pulled out the original Flutter integration, and now I'm gonna add it back step by step. First thing I do is head to flutter.dev slash go slash try, which takes me straight to the repo. A few clicks later, 
I've got the frameworks downloaded onto my machine so I can hop into Xcode and link them into the project. There we go. Now that they're available for import, let's get that Flutter code to work. I've got a method here that fires every so often as the user scrolls. I can add a call and define a new method to present the Flutter view controller, which is provided by one of the frameworks I just imported. Inside, I just instantiate that controller, and then I can present it. Now, when I build my app and scroll down a bit, there's Flutter, ready to capture user sentiment and then return me to enjoying the news. Mm. One detail I should mention is that you don't need the Flutter SDK installed on your machine to try this out. Flutter can package up a module as a complete artifact, and that's what this repo's GitHub action does when it creates these downloadable frameworks. That's interesting. So that's more than before it was possible to add Flutter um, to existing apps, but you had to do all this stuff to make it happen. But now you can just basically, for example, for a web app, you can be like, hey, I just want this little bit of UI. I wonder how that works in the web. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, I just want to do that. And you just call it from JavaScript, I, I suppose. And and uh, things things work. And you don't need to even install Flutter. That's pretty cool. So that, that, may, that means that you can build a module and uh, publish it as, as such. And then your colleagues can just use it as if it was a native thing for iOS, Android, or, or, the, or the web. That's very cool. The goal here is to make it as quick and easy as possible to see Flutter in your stuff. Yeah. I don't think this is for you and me, the Flutter developers, but it's, it's for people who are, uh, are not. Mm. I'm going to call out three language features in particular. Ah, yes. Firstly, yes. we've enum. greatly enhanced enumerations. So when defining an enum type, you can now give it additional fields or methods, getters, even operators. Enums can implement interfaces and apply mix-ins. Almost everything you can do with a class, you can now also use inside an enum declaration. Yeah, this, this is big um, because enums are really nice for kind of static analysis, right? Normally enums would be just numbers, uh, but but by being a type or enum, uh, the, they can make you do things like, oh, switch between these, a switched statement, uh, and you you know that you will never uh, miss any, you know, you know, if you add a new enum, to a new value to an enum uh, and it's used in five different places that enum in switch statements then suddenly all the switch statements will start screaming hey you're not covering all the all the different um, values um, possibilities so uh, so enums are really nice in that respect and but they were limited until now that because they just made things um, can I go back a little bit? Uh, they, they just could do only this. That, that's all it, they could do. And now they, you can actually have values attached to them. You can have uh, yeah, methods and all that. You can do so with a class. Cool. You can now be at the end of the argument list. And that restriction is kind of frustrating when you have a positional argument like a large collection literal or a function expression that looks best at the end. And now Dart lets you order your positional and named arguments in whatever way. Which is also cool, right? So, so normally uh, before it was easier to parse, I guess, the, the code because you, we always knew um, as the Dart compiler, you always knew that as long as there are no, um, these are positional arguments. And then after that, you have the non-positional ones. The, the named ones, right? Uh, but now if the compiler or the parser, if it sees a named argument before a positional argument, it will parse it 
and then it will just continue with the next positional argument if if it's not um, a named one, right? So that, that that's very that's very easy, I guess, and it it makes these things um, closures it's look nice. much nicer. And lastly, here's one that's already reducing thousands of lines of code in the Flutter framework, and we think will also save boilerplate in your own apps. This feature came from a member of the community, and we jumped right on it. Dart already lets you use this before a constructor parameter to implicitly initialize a field on the cloud. One e yes, this is great, and this will also save me a lot of typing, but I have to say that this is on the verge of me saying, well, do we really need this? Um, and uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you, you know that I'm I'm a, a bit of a conservative in that respect. Um, the thing is, this definitely looks nicer. It's definitely much less code, but it also for someone, especially for someone new, it's like, what is this? Like, where where is this even, like, where is this coming from, right? Like, like it's not even that, if it's super dot on hover, then you have to go to button style button uh, to see what, what what that even is um and it's 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 just not a a standard use of super that i've ever seen um maybe it's maybe maybe it is i don't know maybe I've, i haven't just seen enough enough code in different languages but um yeah it's it's just i'm glad that it it it's here i'm glad that it exists uh i just want to say that uh, yeah, let's be careful. Let's let's not add too many of these things because imagine if you were completely new to Flutter and you came to this and it, you'd be like, what? Even this is already a little bit like, whoa, what's that? Uh, but but at least you know. Oh, okay. So we're we're calling something else, right? But here it's like, what's this? Anyway, we already have this dot, so what am I complaining about? It's, uh, it's already The example you might be there. familiar with is a stateless widget in Flutter, which on construction typically takes a key parameter, which is then passed up the chain. Yeah, that's true. It's, yeah, there's a lot of that in Flutter and in my code elsewhere as well. For example, the code base for the Flutter Fire plugins was recently moved from Firebase Extended into the main Firebase account. See, um, they make a, a big deal out of, out of like, making stuff more um, official <laughs> uh, and that it is a big deal right it's like when it's almost looks like it's on someone's private repo uh, and we say oh yeah flutter uh, um, supports firebase that's not really that doesn't sound good but if uh, if it's uh if it's on the we're migrated directly into the Firebase developer site alongside Android, iOS, web, and the other supported platforms. Yeah, if, if it's in the main developer site, then, then it's obvious that this is a big connection there. If you're someone who's been with Flutter for a while, you might hear that and think, wait, I've been using Firebase for like three years, and you're not alone. 62% of Flutter developers also use Firebase. We've worked with the Firebase team on code and videos and put Firebase into DartPad. They've been great partners for Flutter. The difference that you'll see in the future is the two products working to be even better together. Oh, okay. That sounds marketing-y, uh, but I get what it is. For example, when you go to register an app, Flutter is now presented as a choice alongside the other platforms. All right. All right. Choosing Flutter takes you to the registration page, which walks you through installing the right tools, like the Firebase command line tool and the Flutter Fire Dart package. That's a command line tool as well, made specifically to help Flutter devs integrate Firebase. It can create a Firebase project, register the platforms you want to use, and automatically create a Dart file with all the right constants. Did you just create a project called Big Brog Fire 7? Naming things is hard. Also, sometimes it takes me seven tries to record a screencast properly. The Firebase tools work every time, though. In addition to those, the Firebase team also had some developer product updates. Crashlytics, for example, 
helps devs around the world track the stability of their apps and get rapid notification of any new trends or problems. Previously, I'm using Crashlytics, very cool, very good. I'm, I'm using also Sentry. I think Crashlytics is a little bit better uh, in some ways. In some of the ways, Sentry is better. But yeah, if you're not using any crash recording plugin, then um, start doing so because it's, it's really good. <laughs> you're, you'll find out about all these things where things go wrong. Um, yeah, so it's really good. Uh, I need to change my SD card, so uh, I'll be right back. All right, let's go. The stack traces presented by Crashlytics weren't symbolicated for Dart. That's a word I sometimes say. Oh, that's why. Okay. They symbolicate the Flutter stack traces for, for Dart. Interesting. Meetings to look smart, but it really just means all the individual spots in the compiled code weren't tagged with the source code where? names and the line numbers they correspond to. The last time I. As checked. a result, Crashlytics right. can only provide offsets for the functions that appeared in stack traces. With the latest release, though, that's changed. Now, Flutter devs who integrate Crashlytics in their apps will get complete crash reports that show both native and Dart symbols for the full stack trace, making it okay, easier maybe to know exactly new. where maybe a problem new. lies. All right. If that that's sounds cool. like something you could really use in your own applications, Elena and Constantine from Firebase Engineering have a talk with more announcements and all. That's cool. Yes, this is using the Firebase Crashlytics instance, record error, yep, yep, yep. You can see that in my sample uh, and in the game template that I added to um, Flutter samples. So uh, this sounds great, All right? Right here at IO. All right, that's great. So we've seen how Flutter 3 is the culmination of everything we've been working on over the last few years, bringing beautiful, fast apps to Linux and Mac OS, Improving performance on the web, adding updates for iOS and Android. A lot. All right, that's a uh, summary. Leaned into Flutter. And that's ByteDance, who are the company behind TikTok. All right, case study. By the way, of course, this is a big deal. I'm sorry for, for skipping, but I. Uh, we, we get it. Uh, Biden's a big, big deal, big company, and they use Flutter. And apparently they all use Macs. Oh, and they like uh, manga animations. Inspire creative, enrich life. So Flutter 3 is available today. And we're so excited. It to is. I was. I just uh, said Flutter upgrade, uh, Flutter, and I get the newest Dart and Flutter, and and it r runs great on my M1 Mac. It's uh, like yeah, with you. Good job. And that about wraps it up for all the ways you can build apps with Flutter. Wait, hang on. There's one type of application we haven't covered yet. Um, Something we're all familiar with as developers is the need to keep scope realistic and focus hard on doing a few things really well. The idea of saying, well, we could go in both of these directions, but instead we're gonna focus just on this one and blaze that trail for everybody. And one of the fun things about open source is that someone else can come along and say, hey, I, I see you're going that way, totally get it, big fan, but I'm gonna go the other way. And I'm going to spend some time making that great as well, because this is an open source ecosystem and I can do that. Over the last few years, game developers building with Flutter have done exactly that. And while much of the effort going into Flutter has been about making great application UI, they've taken the same hardware acceleration, portable rendering stack, and native performance and used it to create fun. They've had success, too, with thousands of games using Flutter now published in the Play Store. So today we're announcing the Flutter Cat. My game, uh, by the way, I, I have to, I have to, sorry. My game just uh, went over the thread. My paid game, made in Flutter, uh, that was released a year ago, just got its 10,000th install in Google Play. Plus, uh, of course, thousands on, uh, on iOS. Uh, but uh, I, to me, that's success because, and 
I'm just glad that people because the the main reason is because it got to Google Play Pass, uh, which means a lot of people who are subscribers to Google Play Pass get to play it for free, right? Because of the subscription. Uh, so I don't get a lot of money from that. I'm, I'm I don't actually know yet, but uh, but my main thing is that I build a game for for people to play and suddenly people are playing it and and it's amazing and i get a lot of really good feedback from people and really post positive feedback as well um it's still i was a little bit worried after releasing it to so many people that the um the average star rating will plummet because it's just like you know if you if you give it out to such a such a, a huge array of people there will inevitably be people who will just download it download it because it seems interesting and then they will hate it uh, but the opposite is true actually the star rating increased to 4.8 so uh, I'm, I'm very pleased and and so i'm very much with andrew here flutter for games is 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 really nice <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's and it's partly because of Flutter. I, I'm I'm not kidding. Like if I did this in something else, the game would not be the way it is now. Visual game toolkit. It's a starter kit of resources, including a sample game, learning materials, community spaces, and info about credits for Google Developer Services to help you get from a great idea to this. Now you know what he does when it's my turn to talk. <laughs> Let's start by taking a look at the sample. This is a published yeah, open source version me. of Tic-Tac-Toe. We kept the game loop itself simple in order to focus on the particular developer journeys. Uh, yeah. So the confetti animation is already different, but, but the, the game is designed to look good on modern mobile devices with, you know, uh, uh, with rounded corners and all that. Uh, so I, I think to me, this doesn't give it justice. You know, if, if you if you look at it on an actual device, uh, to me, that's, oh, I think I just over overwrote it on my device. Oh, maybe I didn't. See, I think it's it just looks nicer. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but yeah, this is my this is my sample. Common to building games. There's menuing, for example, using widgets to capture settings and move in and out of actually playing. The game also has a soundtrack a and plays sound. I have a to-do item. Is that my to-do item? Make this a lot nicer. <laughs> Damn. Um, this uh, this might be also from some time ago because they they record these uh, a long the time input. before they actually release them, like like months before they release them. And there's some custom shader and painting code to create animated UI that looks like it's being drawn onto the screen. In addition, the sample shows how to hook into the right platform services and provide a complete experience to players. On iOS... Wait, 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 I can, I can actually say how, how long... Yeah. See, this, this still says tic-tac-toe puzzle game, so it's almost definitely more than a month ago. That, yeah, I told you, Google I, like making uh, an event like Google I.O. Is, is hard work. We'll play games. Between the two, you get examples of leaderboards and achievements. Because many developers choose to monetize their games with ads, the sample also includes the Google Mobile Ads plugin and shows how to load and display banners and interstitial ads. You can find a link to the sample on the new game developer page at flutter.dev games. Included are a link to the repo, along with a video walkthrough that takes you through the code base and key features. And there are a number of links to things like asset marketplaces, creation tools, packages for Dart and Flutter, and more. You can also find a link to a dedicated Discord channel for game developers on the Flutter Dev subreddit's Discord server. Channels for a variety of skill levels and topics. We also reached out to some of our partners here at Google, 
And as a result, the solution kit contains info on up to $900 in service credits for eligible developers. $400 of that is for cloud and Firebase services, which can be used on hope. This is really nice. Like, like a lot of the times you are maybe starting a new game developer development project and maybe you need at least to store like screenshots right for for the players and uh and you're unsure if you should do it because you don't have that much money maybe or you know you don't you don't want to spend money before you make uh before you're sure that this is actually something that you want to do in your life and so being able to just tap into that and say hey i can I get those $400? Uh, that, that, that's great. It's it's really good and uh, much, much recommended. Sting and other services to bring your back end to life. If you're eligible. The rest arrives in the form of ad spend matching from Google Ads. By creating an app campaign to raise awareness of your game, you could be eligible for Google to match the first $500 of your ad budget. That's also good. I didn't realize that's also part of the plan. Uh, so yeah some games really need to get like i couldn't tell you how how important it is to market games i i wasn't able to um i tried a little bit w with my with my knights of san francisco game to use ads to promote it uh but you know with a very limited budget and it didn't didn't get any traction at all uh for me what really worked was pr uh, so so just like, you know, getting out there, talking to people who write uh, to journalists and some of them liked it and then then, uh, then wrote about it. Uh, but, um, but I know that, uh, for example, for free games, this, this might be a different story uh, because it's much easier for people to, to you know, see a f an advertisement on for a free game and say, okay, I'll install it. Um, I basically my ads were, hey, here's a cool game. Do you want to pay three dollars to play it? And that apparently doesn't work these days. And also, again, I I spend a tiny amount of money. So that's the Flutter Casual Game Toolkit. We're already enjoying the games y'all have built so far. Google recently sponsored a puzzle challenge, inviting developers to re check these out. Then when I was covering this slide puzzle challenge or puzzle challenge, I thought that it was only for slide puzzles for some reason. And now I see that people were much more creative in understanding what that means. Uh, I, I just thought it was these puzzles, which I don't really enjoy. Uh, so I'm glad that I was wrong and other people were more creative because this looks fantastic. Fantastic! Oh, oh well, wow. it's a slight puzzle. It looks really good. Nice slide one. Okay, that, that was cool. You know, yeah. when we think about Flutter, we don't think of it as just like a Google Teams product. We think of it as everybody's product. It's true that at Google, we're certainly contributing a lot of code to the Flutter repo, but the Flutter team is much larger with more contributors who don't work at Google than ever. We think of Flutter as including the package ecosystem. There's about 25,000 packages on PubDev, 
including big publishers like Adobe, Amazon, and Microsoft, and Flutter favorites like SQLite and Sentry. But it also includes the thousands of packages for everything from <laughs> navigation. <laughs> I know it's, it wasn't meant like that, but I, I liked how, how he said uh, SQLite and Sentry as, as if as if almost as if uh, Tim was uh, afraid to say it aloud because Sentry is a direct competitor to Firebase Crash Linux, right? Um, but no, it was just um, it. I'm. I'm <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> well, let's play the game. Lots of favorites like SQLite and Sentry. <laughs> but it also includes the thousands of packages for everything from navigation to UI. Flutter also includes the thousands of contributions that developers like yourselves have made to Flutter 3, as well as the feedback you've given to help us focus our resources. And even during these difficult times, many of you have started to meet up again, and that's also great. We've seen meetups and user groups in 68 countries around the world. And many of you might have attended one of the over 400 Flutter festivals that have taken place around the world. So a big thank you to all of you who've made Flutter what it is. We're so proud to be on this journey with you. Have a great IO and have fun with Flutter. All right, closing thoughts. Uh, I think it was great. This was great. I'm glad that they're not adding a bunch of um, new, new breaking Feet breaking changes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like all the things that they added. Uh, I'm glad that we can now really say Flutter runs everywhere and pretty much. And I'm, of course, very proud of the fact that uh, we're, we can now talk about Flutter and games and how it's a really good fit. It's a marriage made in heaven. All right, see you later.